is JSA TV, the newsroom for tech and telecom professionals. I'm Dean Perrine, Executive Vice President at JSA, and today we're catching up with Mr. Dan Kenny. Dan is a Managing Director at Q Advisors. Dan, thanks for taking the time to speak with me today. I appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me, Dean. You got it. You got it. So, Dan, for uh, folks that don't already know, why don't you tell them a little bit about Q Advisors? Sure. Uh, Q Advisors is a boutique investment bank. Uh, based out of Denver with uh, additional offices in uh, San Francisco and and now more recently Munich, uh, which we will talk a little bit more about. Um, We currently have about 20 uh, professionals based out of our offices. And um, we have been 100% TMT focused since the firm's founding in 2001. Uh, More recently, we've been heavily focused on uh, managed IT, digital infrastructure, and unified communications uh, as a service, among other subsectors. Uh, in terms of services, we are primarily uh, sell side and buy side uh, advisory, as well as uh, provide you know providing uh, private placements of debt and equity capital. Uh, we are at this point about 50% uh, domestic and 50% international transactions, which we uh, like to think uh, differentiates us for, for our size. Excellent. Thanks, Dan. So, um, you know, as, as a follower of the industry, I have heard a great deal about uh, Q Advisors, particularly in the last year or so, yeah, last year and a half. Um, you guys have continued to grow, as you mentioned, with, uh, with some of the international stuff. Uh, but you recently celebrated a, a relatively uh, important milestone. You want to talk to us a little bit about that? Yeah, sure, Dean. Uh, you know, 2020 was a tough year for for many, both you know personally and from a business perspective. Uh, we feel extremely fortunate to be focused on uh, the sectors that we focus on, and uh, Q Advisors was actually as a firm able to close 17 deals in 2020, which is uh, a record for the for the firm over the past 20 years. Uh, so we're pretty excited about that, and uh, we continue to do a ton of work in. In Europe, um, you know, the number of transactions we've been doing annually has been escalating pretty quickly in recent years. And we recently opened a new office in Munich and hired a uh, new MD, Christian McCarter, who will be based out of that office and spearheading uh, the continued growth and, and supporting that. Thanks, Dan. I appreciate that. And again, congratulations on those uh, significant milestones. But let's talk about the the sector, the industry, um, and your place within the industry in terms of um, where things where things are headed in the TMT space, specifically with regard to M and A. As you mentioned, it was a record year for you guys, um, and lots of international work there in Europe. But where where do you see things, you know, going in in twenty twenty one? Existing um, existing kind of a ramping up a business in, in Europe? How about the industry in general? Yeah, look, despite the, the pandemic, um, uh, 2020 was a really strong year for TMT M&A, and I think it's indicative of the importance of the sector globally. Uh, we, don't, we don't expect uh, much change in 2021. We expect it to continue to be hot. Um, you know, there's tons of capital out there chasing TMT opportunities. There are a number of subsectors that continue to be ripe for uh, continued consolidation. Uh, obviously, there's been massive appetite for, for digital infrastructure, and we don't see uh, that changing anytime soon. Um, uh, the managed IT sector has, has seen uh, a ton of consolidation in the past few years, but it, it remains highly fragmented. And so we expect uh, the same level of MA activity this year and, and years to come uh, in managed IT. Um, I think the one other thing I would add is, you know, we've got some potential tax changes coming up in 2022. And this isn't unique to TMT, but, um, you know, we, we project that there could be an acceleration of some activity as, as business owners try and uh, get their liquidity event in before those tax changes are, are, are impacted in 2022 and beyond. 
Yeah, so that's that's not something that I necessarily had given much thought to as far as the taxes. So you guys are looking at a number of different variables uh, with regard to the the industry. So um, interesting thoughts there. But you know, is there is there any one thing or any maybe group of two or three things that you can point to as kind of being the overall catalyst for uh, the amount of M and A that you guys both that you have seen and, and the industry has seen in the last year and what you're predicting to be in 2021? Yeah, look, it's hard to point to any single factor. I, I can, you, it's easy to kind of take a step back and, and look at the, uh, the demand for bandwidth uh, is not going away. And that, that impacts a lot of the sectors that we play in, right? Uh, COVID has only uh, exaggerated that uh, as everyone tries to figure out uh, the work at home and kind of the go forward, because I, I think there is going to be a new normal, which is not everyone back in the office. And that has, that has been positive for, for many of the subsectors that we, we focus on, including infrastructure, uh, unified communications, obviously. Uh, and so that's, that's driven uh, continued interest from both strategic and uh, uh, private equity you know, capital investors in the space. Excellent. Thanks, Dan. And thanks for those insights on uh, 2020 and uh, what uh, what things look like for 2021. For our viewers that want to learn more about Q Advisors, where should they go? Uh, sure. The, uh, our website is uh, www.qllc.com. Awesome. Dan, thanks again for the time today. Have a, have a great Friday. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. You got it.